So the study was very simply designed and pragmatic one. Actually, the first line option is a combination of taxanes with bevacizumab in patients that are candidate to receive chemotherapy. So for those patients, we know that after some cycles, it's sometimes difficult to maintain the taxan treatment. So when we stop the taxan treatment and we don't have any progression, we're continuing just with bevacizumab. The trial addresses the question of comparison of what is the standard maintenance, bevacizumab, versus a maintenance with the addition of capacitabine after stopping the taxane. Right, so the basic idea is can you remove the taxane and use capsitabine, which should be a relatively gentle drug, instead? Exactly. Less toxicity potentially, but also a non-cross-resistant drug that means that maybe we will have also an amplified benefit regarding the fact that we are introducing a kind of switch maintenance, affording to the patient the possibility to have better outcomes. Potentially very interesting then, how many patients did you look at and what did you see? So clearly we have included 300 patients, among them 200 have benefited from the first phase of taxanes with bevacizumab combination and those patients were randomized between two possibilities, bevacizumab alone or bevacizumab in combination with capacitabine. The primary endpoint was uh, progression-free survival from the maintenance initiation and the result we find clearly are strong positivity regarding the PFS. We have three times more control disease with capacitamine bevacizumab compared to bevacizumab alone. And the PFS for those patients that have received capacitamine in beva with bevacizumab in the maintenance phase is close to 17 months. That means approximately one year and a half, comparing to a little bit less than one year just with bevacizumab maintenance. So you're getting a big difference. Yes. What about the difference in toxicities? If you look at the toxicity, there is increasing rate of toxicity for the patient that have been exposed to capacitabine with about 30% end food syndrome. This is the main issue. But in fact, we have also looked at the general quality of life statement from the patients. And uh, this was published uh, actually in Lancet Oncology showing that there is no difference regarding this point. So there is a little bit more toxicity, but clearly the impact on PFS is so strong that it's limited regarding the quality of life impact. It is, of course, um, dangerous to talk about the impact on overall survival, but what are your thoughts? We have a positive trial on overall survival because we have looked exactly on the overall survival and the hazard ratio is 0.38, with an increasing more than one year difference regarding the overall survival benefit. So actually, looking at the result of the trial, looking at the PFS, and the improving of overall survival, there is a clear, a strong signal that first, maintenance treatment is an important issue, the quality of the maintenance you give to the patient, and the strategy regarding this maintenance in metastatic breast cancer. And for those patients who are beginning a treatment with taxane and bevacizumab, having a switching maintenance to capsitabine bevacizumab might clearly improve PFS and strongly overall survival. So it sounds as if you, you say you've got a hazard ratio less than a half in sure. overall survival and that's statistically significant too. Yes. So it's a done deal and you should always switch to capsidomy. So it's just one trial. You know that sometimes let's say that the clinician are very cautious with the results but I have to confess that this is the first time from a long time that in HER2 negative population we have a positive trial in overall survival that clearly addresses the question of this strategy as possibly a standard of care and also for the future the way we will define and think about the way to treat the patient with a maintenance treatment. What, very briefly then, is the take home message that doctors should take away from your finding? So I will say that for those patients for whom we are initiating a treatment with bevacizumab and taxanes, clearly decide and also design the strategy that you will use for treating those patients. After a short phase of induction with bevacizumab and taxanes, if the patient do not have progression, switching to capsitabine and bevacizumab may clearly be, for me, a standard of care.